When it gets to be summer swelter, think about a way to wet your whistle, cool down, head into a cool bar. What do they say? Every every somewhere it's wine thirty, <laughs> right? Somewhere in the world. I think that sign might be on my kitchen wall. <laughs> Cannot confirm or deny. So New York City definitely has its fill of chic and trendy spots, but sometimes we're just looking for a low-key haunt where we can like dress down, let loose, dive bars, yeah. give us just that, and so much more. So with today being National Dive Bar Day, it is such a day, we thought we'd explore what the Big Apple has to offer. So here to share a few watering holes worth our time is Erica Adams, deputy editor at Eater New York. Good morning, Erica. Thanks hey, for Erica. being with us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Excited to be here. All right, so who's the, who's the taste tester? Who's the one who comes up with the list and how exactly do they do it? And then do they get like liver care afterwards? <laughs> No liver care, unfortunately, and it is absolutely a group project among the entire Eater New York team, which consists of our two critics and our four-person news team. I so, like it. Very, uh, very, uh, you know, of the people there. Yeah, how did you decide which bars to even check out? There are so many in the city. I mean, we have an extensive, you know, process, very scientific for this. <laughs> <laughs> We talk with the rest of the Eater team, find out what, you know, everybody's going to, what everyone likes. We look at online reviews. We we take a really holistic look at the city and, you know, different neighborhoods and kind of who's talking about what dive bars in those neighborhoods. And then we kind of map out where we want to check out um, and start looking at places for the list. But how do you actually de define a dive bar? Because one person's dive bar is someone's super you know, trendy dream. nightclub spot. <laughs> Well, you know, it's like you both were saying at the beginning, you know, this is not a chic and trendy spot. There's no pretension. It's a nice place to hang out. You go in, it's all about the experience. You know, it's probably dimly lit. Your shoes might be sticking to the floor a little bit as you walk around. You know, you sit down at the bar next to a regular who's probably been in that same seat for the past 20 years. Definitely bring cash. It's probably cash only. Um, you know, it's a nice, reliable place to hang out. All right, so let's hit the hot spots. We're going to go to the Bronx first. Punch Bowl, how did you pick them? And tell us what the vibe is. So I believe there has been some iteration of a bar in this space for over 100 years. And it has been around for decades as the Punch Bowl. Um, it's a really classic dive bar. There's a jukebox and pool table Aww. and dart. Yeah, they usually have a bunch of sports games going on the TVs. It's a reliable place to hang out. You know what? I can tell by the tiny windows that it's a place that you want to be in. <laughs> when you can't see outside, that's where you want to be on the inside. And everybody <laughs> likes to hang around the punch bowl, that's for sure. Um, so let's head to Brooklyn. Tell us about Brooklyn Ice House. Oh, Brooklyn Ice House. That's where I want to go tonight or oh. potentially right after this interview. Um, <laughs> You know, it's an old school bar in Red Hook, right? And it has a big backyard patio, so really nice in the summer. Um, they've got some classic $6 beer and shot combos. And this is a dive bar where you actually want to order some food, too. Huh. If I actually was going there tonight, I'd go for the Frito Pie, which is, of course, a magical creation of chili and shredded mm. cheese that's tossed in a single serve bag of Fritos. And like, with a $6 oh my beer gosh. and shot, like, you just can't top that. It's served <laughs> in, the in the Frito bag? That's how it's traditionally served, yeah. Oh, that is that, that is awesome. That is amazing. You had me at outdoor patio and Frito pie. Let's go to Midtown. <laughs> Jimmy's Corner, is this place actually on a corner? Do they have Frito bagged uh, entrees? What's going on here? <laughs> it is not actually on a corner. It's on West 44th Street, smack in the middle of 6th and 7th Avenues. Um, uh, and the thing about this spot, oh, were you? That's around the corner that's from us, right. so that's, that's why we're like we're oh, writing no. it down right now. We're like, what time do is they it? start? <laughs> do they start serving at 10 a.m.? <laughs> 11 a.m. Right after work today. Um, but no, the thing about Jim's Corner, um, it's you know, I'm actually I'm told by colleagues who worked around Times Square that this has been a favorite dive bar for media types. So you know, personally oh. love it. Um, but in general, it's a really beloved bar. It's tucked in between chains and the you know the lights and the glitz of Times Square. It was founded in the 1970s by a boxing world legend named Jimmy Glenn. And Jimmy actually sadly passed away due to COVID in May 2020. Oh. And then the bar remained closed for over a year after that. And it finally just opened up last October. And when we covered the reopening, I remember this. So clearly readers were very, very excited to see it back open and see it come back. It was really nice. We love a comeback story yeah. in New York and beyond. Mm -hmm. And another unlikely location for a dive bar is right near Bloomingdale's on the east side, the yeah. Subway Inn. 
Subway Inn, yeah, no, so this is a pretty legendary dive bar. It's nearly 100 years old. It's been wow. around since 1937. It's actually changed locations a couple of times, um, but generally in the neighborhood. And yeah, you can see that iconic neon sign there. It's a really great place. That's amazing. Hey, let's go down to Tribeca. You've got Nancy's Whiskey Pub on the list. What, why did that one make the list for you? So this is a real treasure of a dive bar. I love this place. Um, it's very friendly. Again, another decades old spot. Um, and it's right in the middle of one of Manhattan's most expensive neighborhoods. And the thing about this bar too, is that it's known for its stock of shuffleboard tables that are available to play. It's a rare dive bar in the city where you can grab a beer and you can challenge someone to shuffleboard, which is, I know on everyone's bucket list. I love playing shuffleboard. One of my good friends actually has one of those that they got from a dive bar that closed. That is so super oh, cool. Right. <laughs> they bought it on Facebook. What do they call it? Facebook, Facebook Marketplace, Marketplace, baby. <laughs> That is one of the best games, and you never know where you can find those shuffle boards. And now I know. And now we know how to ease into our 80s with a beer <laughs> in our hand. <laughs> Erica Adams, thank you so much for sharing all of your picks with us. And, of course, there's a lot more to look at. Which dive bars made the top 25 list? Go to nyeater.com.